we've got that taken care of. Technically, we're now prepared to make our way to the forest, as Sheik basically directed us to do. Um, he said that uh, you should make your way to the forest temple, but equipped as you currently are, uh, you can't even enter the forest temple. So he was obviously making allusions to this hookshot. Now that we have the hookshot, supposedly we'll be able to enter. Um, however, uh, we're actually not going to be doing that just quite yet. First, we're going to run around Hyrule a little bit more and uh, do some exploring some uh, some side quests first here. First, actually what I want to do just before I forget to do it so that I'm not straining for it later. What I want to do right now is immediately make my way back to Hyrule Castle, or now Ganon's Castle. And remember how we pointed out how there was that one lone gold sculpture up on the wall, but we couldn't get it because we didn't have access to our boomerang or slingshot anymore? Now, with the hookshot, it functions as both. Yeah, I don't think that I mentioned that either. Um, the hookshot also um, functions uh, offensively as well. So not only can you hook into things to draw yourself closer to them or hook into objects to bring them to you, you can also attack enemies with the hookshot. So we'll just, again, target over it with our red targeting reticule. Oh, look at that. It's so strong that it kills the Skulltula with one hit instead of the two that we've been accustomed to so far. So now we can just... And so you can see, too, just like with your boomerang or your slingshot with the... Uh, with the hookshot, you can also Z target, and it goes to a third person's perspective. And so, just like those items too, you can also now strafe around it like this, right? So that's neat. Look at that; just bring it straight to you, just like your boomerang would. Okay. So I just wanted to get that one out of the way so that I wouldn't forget it for later. Okay. Back out into Hyrule Field we go. I think. What I want to do first is check out what's going on at Lolon Ranch. Remember when we were in Kakariko and we came across Talon sleeping? And they said that he was fired from the ranch. So I want to know what's going on there. Everything appears relatively peaceful. I guess we won't know for sure until we actually make our way in there. Let's turn it back to day. Also, you know what I've noticed, too, is that no stall children have been appearing in the field. Normally, at nighttime, they run rampant. Hmm. All right. Well... Oh. What have we got in here? Everything looks normal so far. Those are the Kukos, but Talon is obviously absent. And there's still nobody up in the room here. So this whole area is vacant. Let's see, over here, this is where the cows were kept. This is where we came across the farmhand Ingo. Oh, look, it's it's Malin, I think. All grown up, too. Oh, a visitor. It's been a long time since we've had a visitor here. Where did you come from? Since Ganondorf came, people in the castle town have gone. Places have been ruined and monsters are wandering everywhere. Mr. Ingo was just using the ranch to gain Ganondorf's favor. Everyone seems to be turning evil. But Dad, he was kicked out of the ranch by Mr. Ingo. What? If I disobey Mr. Ingo, he will treat the horses so badly. So, there's nothing I can do. Oh, no. 
So Ingo took over. I remember Ingo talking about how he thought Talon was lazy, and that I mean, it's, it, that, that's true. He was lazy, but I didn't think he'd go so far as to take over the whole thing and then kick him right out. It's unbelievable. Well, the horses all seem to be here, albeit grown up. They used to be young ponies last time we were here. Alright, oh, look at that. Here's Ingo looking all fancy schmancy, not in his work overalls like he was <laughs> before. Now he's got malintent in the horses, I guess. Let's see what's going on here. There are some people in Kakariko spreading rumors that I cheated Talon out of the ranch, but don't be ridiculous. That guy Talon was weak. I, the hard-working Ingo, poured so much energy into this place. I don't want any strangers like you saying anything bad about me. Listen, the great Ganondorf recognized my obvious talents and gave the ranch to me. Oh no, this guy's in league with Ganondorf? I will raise a fine horse and win recognition from the great Ganondorf. Say, young man, do you want to ride one of my fine horses? Pay me ten rupees and you can ride. Alright, let's give it a shot. Ride. Do you want to hear how to ride? Uh, we won't listen. It's pretty easy. I'll explain it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like he only gives us a minute. <laughs> so if we approach one of these horses here... Oh, okay, so that one doesn't work. This one's got a saddle on it, though. So we can uh, approach that, and the action icon turns to climb. So now, look at that. We've mounted up on the horse, and by pressing forward the way we normally would do to run, we just run around on the horse. Not bad. If we uh, hold uh, down on the stick, that will slow us down normally, uh, uh, or slow us down quicker than we normally would, because if we uh, let go of the stick, that will slow down normally. So then holding back on the stick, and then once we come to a total standstill, we can press the action icon to go down. And then you'll also notice those carrot icons. Those are like, uh, we can give the horse a little bit of a pat, like this. And that drains one of our carrots. And that, uh, we can use that to give us a little bit of a speed boost. You see, if we, uh, wait a few seconds, gradually they, uh, they get refilled back up again. Hey, time's up, young man. You only paid 10 rupees. You've played around long enough. All right, well, that was fun. Now, what we want to do is do it again. Pay me 10 rupees, and you can ride. Okay, we will not listen. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to be a little bit sneaky and play... Epona song. Remember that was the song that um, Malin taught us all those years ago when we first came to the ranch to uh, to see her and uh, she taught us Epona song and remember it uh, got that uh, the pony, Epona, who's normally very shy and timid and uh, would run away from us when we would approach her him or her, I'm not 100% sure I think it's a she um, but uh, after we learned Epona's song, it uh, sort of tamed her. So let's try playing Epona song this is the first time we've played that song since we first learned it. And look at that! Oh, look at that! She's all grown up into a horse now, too. And she also has a saddle on, so we can climb and mount her. And the reason why this is significant is because you will notice almost right away just how much faster she is. And if you hit dead on now... Okay, that was a bad example. <laughs> But if at a real top speed, and if you manage to get it just at the right angle, just head on, you can actually hop over these fences. Let's try this big one. Alright, there we go. And look at that, we even got a little bit of a reward for it. Five bonus rupees. Now, before our time is up here, I want to point out one more thing. That if we use up all of our carrots, they don't replenish at the same rate they normally do. So that's... uh one of the downsides of using them all up. You'll want to leave yourself at least a couple. Now, before our time runs out, we want to quickly talk to Ingo while we're mounted on Epona. The reason we do that is it triggers this. You're getting better. How about a little race with me? One lap around the corral with that horse. Now, this is the advantage here, is that Ingo doesn't know the difference between the horses. He doesn't know uh, that we actually have a prior um, connection with Epona. 
Uh, and he also doesn't realize that Epona is so much better than the other horses. So this is why you only want to do this while you're mounted on Epona, not one of the other horses. So here he's here chasing you, uh, uh, challenging you to um, to a race around the corral, and you can only beat him if you're mounted on Epona. So uh, so that's the deal there. That's why after all this time, what the significance is of, of having learned Epona's song. Look at that. You can even see on the gate. I just noticed now there's uh, uh, Ingo's likeness is printed on those those placards on, on the gate entrance. <laughs> All right, let's make a little wager, say 50 rupees. All right, let's do it. And again, we've got the rupees so we can afford to do it. Um, but uh, you, you're gonna wanna remember to um, uh, have a, um, a fair amount of, uh, of funds built up before coming in here and, and taking uh, taking on this challenge, especially if it's your first time ever doing it because uh, you might not you might fail one or two times, you might have to keep doing it and you'll you'll lose the 50 rupees every time you lose the race. So anyway, let's do it. All right. Um, this is kind of hard to describe exactly. This is just one of those things that takes a practice. Um, but uh, see, like right away, he kind of by default runs a little bit faster than you. And it can be hard to get in front of them. So kind of part of the trick is to use just enough carrots as needed to get in front of them and then to kind of block them if you can. And again, like I mentioned before, it's really important not to use up your last carrot because that will um, significantly slow down how long it takes for your carrots to replenish. And if you run out of carrots, you just flat out won't be able to beat them. You won't be able to have the speed enough. And you can saw that one point of the the corner around the corral, I had to take advantage of that specific moment where there was just enough of an opening for me to get in front of them. And then, um, rather than allowing myself to slow down and allowing him to overtake me, I was positioning myself right in front of him. So that way it was preventing him from passing me and also giving myself um, an uh, opportunity for my carrots to get replenished as well. So that's the main strategy there. So now we beat him. Shoot, he's all pissed off. If the great Ganondorf found out about this humiliation, hey you, how about another race? If you win, you can keep the horse. <gasps> oh, now that would be a sweet prize. And sure enough, as if you didn't see this coming, this is what this has all been about, is trying to win a Ponifar ourselves. So let's try it again. This time, he's going to be a little bit harder. He's really going to be pushing himself now to uh, make sure he doesn't lose the race a second time. But the basic principles still apply. So we got to make sure not to get caught behind him there, because he can cut us off just as easily as we can cut him off. So right about there, we'll try to cut him off here. There we go. That should be just enough. All right, now we can afford, we're close enough to the finish line, we can afford to blow them all. And there we go. Maybe I made that look easy. That can be tricky if it's your first time ever doing it. What's up with that horse? I love this this cheese ball music that plays now because the comic relief character is all ticked off. What's up with that horse? Is that a Pona? How did you tame that wild horse right under my nose? I was going to present that horse to the great Ganondorf, but I bet it on the race and lost. Shoot! Ha ha ha. As I promised, I'll give the horse to you. However, I'll never let you leave this ranch. What? Uh-oh. That's not good. <laughs> All right. Well, now we've got our friend Epona here, so that's pretty sweet, but we can't get out the way we came. What are we going to do now? Well... Luckily for us, as we demonstrated, Epona is real good at her jumping ability. So we can either jump over this wall here, or the either of the uh, far walls on the other side. So if we just approach at a nice good straight on angle, get our speed up top, and look at that, we can hop right over the back wall. And we are out of here. Sweet! Alright! So we've got a horse now. And uh, now, um, sort of the uh, the gimmick behind this is that not only now do we have uh, a much easier way of uh, getting around Hyrule Field a lot quicker. Let's see if we can hop over this little fence here. Sometimes, yeah, just because that fence is on a weird kind of a, a sort of a slightly sloping hill, it, it can sometimes, I don't know, 
cause it to glitch and she just won't jump over sometimes, but usually you can jump pretty easily over little fences by like that. I was just gonna point that out to you. But yeah, anyway, like I was saying, so now we've obviously got a, a, a much easier, quicker way of making our way all the way around uh, Hyrule Field. But also, um, in the event, I'm not gonna show it just now to demonstrate, but um, uh, in the future, uh, if uh, you ever uh, make your way back out to Hyrule Field and uh, Epona uh, just isn't around for some reason, either because the game code is hasn't loaded her properly or else you've just maybe used a warp to get from one point to the other and she wasn't where you left her off, you can always just play Epona's song anywhere you are and if you're in an area where it's possible for Epona to come to, she will just automatically be called to you. So it's pretty neat. Pretty neat. All right, um, I got an idea. How about we make our way back down to Lake Hylia? Remember, before last time we were here, uh, we had to use uh, the um, the ladder that's on the side of that uh, little wall there. But now that we've got a Pona, we can actually just hop straight over these fences. Look at that. All right, 